welcome back. Um, in this video we are going to be looking at using OSPF as the PE to CE routing protocol. In the last video we looked at using BGP uh, so what I've done is I've reset the those changes that we made so all that's configured now is what where we were at the end of the first video. So we've got MPLS configured, we've got the core BGP stuff configured and we've got the VRFs configured on the PEs. So in this video we need to look at configuring OSPF between the customer and us on each of the four links and then doing mutual redistribution on the PEs so taking the routes out of OSPF getting them into BGP and then getting them back out of BGP into OSPF so that each of the sites learns about the other routes so we'll start on PE1 and customer A site 1 over here so the first thing we need to do is stand up the OSPF configuration on the PE so it's a little bit different to a normal OSPF configuration um, because the process IDs don't go as high as RASN um, we'll use the customer A ASN of 65001 it's local to the router anyway so it doesn't have to match but what we need to do is we also need to tag the VRF onto the router OSPF so that would be your usual that you used to configure in an OSPF instance but we need to tag on that we're using a VRF so we'll do that and we'll set the router ID to 80.1.17.1 and we'll do a network command or neighbor command do a network command of 80.1.17.0 the wildcard mask mask of a slash thirty, and we'll put it in area zero. So what this is doing is just enabling OSPF on this interface here within the VRF. So we exit out of that, and if we come on to the CE, um, so the interface is up. We don't at the minute have a loopback, so let's configure a loopback first. We use. 10.1.1.1 with a slash 32 mask and then on here we don't need to do any specific VRF configuration because the customers don't know about the VRFs so we'll do 65001 which is OSPF we'll specify that and again we'll set the router ID we'll use this IP address for that and then we'll do network command first of all we'll do it for the link net so we're enabling OSPF on this common interface with the wildcard mask for a slash 30 we'll put that in area 0 and then we'll do the same thing but for the loopback specify all zeros because it's slash 32 and we'll put that in area 0 as well so we see that neighbourships come up and we should see the same thing on the PE yeah so if we do a show IP OSPF neighbor we see that it's in here we don't have to specify any specific stuff regarding showing neighbors VRFs it just shows up in the standard show I show IP OSPF neighbor so what we need to do now on the PE is we need to go into router BGP 65991 so this is the the main process ID that we're running in the ISP and we need to go into the address family of IPv4 and making sure we specify the VRF of customer A and then in here we need to redistribute OSPF and then we need to specify the process ID which was 65001 and if you if you go to the next bit and do contact sensitive help you can see that it, there's an option for the VRF but because we're, we're already in the address family for the VRF we don't need to add that on there if you, you can do if you want but it just it gets rid of it when you look at it in the configuration so that's all we need to do there and then if we exit out and then come back into router OSPF 65001 VRF customer A what we need to do in here is redistribute BGP and the autonomous system is 65,000 
991 and we'll just do subnets just to make sure that everything's covered so if we look at section root of PGP we also do root of OSPF so ignoring this bit for now because this is the main OSPF configuration for the ISP so within the address family for IPv4 within BGP uh, within the customer A VRF we're redistributing OSPF and then within OSPF we are re redistributing BGP so what we should see is we are advertising a loopback in site 1 so if we do a show BGP VPN v4 unicast all we should see in here yet yeah, we've got the two routes and we can see that the path has got a question mark which usually identifies that it's been redistributed which it has so we should also be able to see show BGP VPN v4 unicast all this is on p1 so our root reflector we can also see that they have made their way up here as well so to extend this configuration we'll come on to PE2 and we'll do the same thing so we'll do router OSPF 65002 tagging the VRF for customer A set the router ID to 80.1.19.1 .1 and then we'll configure the network for that too with the wildcard mask for a slash 30 We'll put that in area zero. And while we're in here, we'll redistribute BGP 65991 subnets. So if we jump onto CE cost A site 2, do I do show IP interface brief just to double check? Yeah, the interface is up. We don't have a loop back as of yet, so we'll configure one. configure 10.2.2.2 with a slash 32 mask and then we'll go into router OSPF for 65.002 set the router ID and then we'll set the network for that like we did on the PE put it in area 0 and then we'll set the network for the loop back as well to make sure that's included in OSPF here is there and we can see that neighbourship has already come up so the last thing we need to do on this on the PE sorry PE2 is go into router BGP 65991 come into address family IPv4 for VRF customer A and we need to do redistribute OSPF and its autonomous system 65002. So that's the basically the exact same configuration that we did on PE1. So we're redistributing out of OSPF into BGP and then out of BGP back into OSPF. So if we do a show BGP VPN v4 unicast all can see that we've got all four routes in here now so we've got the two link nets between the customers and us and then we've got the two loopbacks so what we should find is that on the customer sites in their routing protocols yet yeah, we've got some OSPF routes here for the that's the loopback on this router here and then that's the link net between site 2 and PE2 likewise on site 2 we should have a similar thing yet we've got the loop back of this router here and then we've got the link net between site 1 and PE1 here so at this point we should have connectivity so from site 1 we should be able to ping the loop back on site 2 and we can we should also be able to trace route and this time we shouldn't have to specify a source because both of the customer sites know about the link nets so if the packets were sourced from the G 
zero zero IP address. Each of the sites know about those IP addresses, so it shouldn't matter. We'll prove that here. We can see, yeah, we're going across the MPLS network, and that's all working for customer A. So replicating that for customer B is fairly simple. We just need to come back onto PE2 and stand up another OSPF instance. This time for 65003, the VRF for customer B. Set the router ID 80.20.1. And then set the network. And again, while we're here, we'll redistribute BGP 65991 subnets. And just to save coming back onto here, we'll go back into BGP, go into the address family for v IPv4, sorry, tag in the VRF of cost B and we'll redistribute OSPF 65003 which is the process ID from here. So coming on to CE cost B2 which is this router here. Double check. Yep the interface is up. We don't have a loopback. So just quickly configure a loop back and then again router OSPF 65003 this is the normal OSPF configuration set a router ID use the linknet IP and then do the same for the network slash 30 wildcard put the things in area 0 and then we'll add the loop back into there as well area 0 and again we can see that that neighbourship has come up we shouldn't see any routes here yet because we haven't configured anything over here but what we should see is on P2 that yeah everything's everything looks normal here and we can do a show IP OSPF neighbour we can see that we've got three neighbours. We've got the neighbourship into the ISP, and then we've got this is this router here, and then this is this router here. So the final bit we need to do is on PE3 and on the customer B site 1. So let's do that now. Come on to PE3. And Let's do router OSPF. An autonomous system is 65004. So 65004, making sure we get the VRF for customer B. Send the router ID to 80.1.18.1, which is the IP address on the link net here. And then send the network. 18.0 again area 0 and then again while we're here we will redistribute PGP 65991 subnets and then go into router BGP 65991 address family IPv4 with VRF cost B and in here we'll redistribute OSPF OSPF process ID 65004 that's all the configuration we need on the PE for now so if we come on to CE cost B1 do a show IP interface brief so again we don't have a loop back so let's fix that 10.4.4.4 with a slash 32 mask so router OSPF 65004 router ID set the network for the link net and set the network for the loopback Oop. 
So we should see that adjacency come up in a second. So just had to sort something out there. One of the interfaces went a bit weird within GNS3, but that has come up now. We can see that that's come up as we expect. And again, on P3, if we do a show IP OSPF neighbor, we can see there that we're fully up. And what we should be able to do is do a show PGP VPN v4 unicast all and we can see all four routes in here so if we come onto the CEs for customer B do a show IP route again we can see the loop back so that's the loop back of this router and then that is the link net between this router and the PE and if we come on to this one do a show IP route if I move this down here so this is the loopback of this router here and then this is the link net here that we expect so just to do a bit of verification we should be able to ping as we could with customer A with no issues and that's working fine and again we should be able to do a trace route without having to specify the source interface because each of the customers knows about the IP addresses on the link net so that's all working um, last thing to just double check is to show what it looks like on P1 so again like before when the BGP configuration on the route reflector we can see all of the different routes for each of the different VRFs so because the VRFs aren't on there, it doesn't show us the names of the VRFs, but it shows us the route distinguishers. So this is for VRF cost A, and this is VRF cost B. You can tell that by the route distinguishers here. So all of that is working. We have configured OSPF as the PE to CE routing protocol, and the customers have got connectivity between their respected sites. So in the next video, um, we'll look at EIGRP, and how that how that looks between the PEs and the CEs and then after that we'll do a video on static routes thank you for watching